Jeffrey Durham, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. It's nice to see you, and I'll tell you why, because you were such an inspiration to me growing up, because I used to watch you on the telly, and I've always been mesmerised by magic. I don't know why. It just takes me back to being a kid. It's like me being in a Disney film. And you were so enthusiastic about it, and you kind of made it fun. Are you still as enthusiastic now? Absolutely. It's the best job in the world. I really do love it, and I'm totally enthusiastic about it and my view of it is very similar to your view of it you know i've always just had it, i've i've always seen it like being a big kid really i i'm 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 not into big illusions and women being sawing in half and all that kind of old caper i'm really not into that i'm i'm just i i just enjoy entertaining with I, it's in a funny sort of way you know alex it's the way i express my personality it's a bit sad <laughs> because because there are much better ways of expressing your personality i'm sure but i tend to express my personality by doing magic tricks and the opportunity is i've got at the moment because i'm touring this one man show the opportunity that i've got to do two hours of magic tricks i do the first half on stage then with almost without a break i go and do close up in the bar in the interval so that people can see it right up close and then i go out into the auditorium keep going doing the close up in the in the interval and then just without a break go straight into the second half and do it on stage and i just love it's such a privilege privilege to be able to do that for two hours you know uh, just on my own and it is honestly the way I sort of express myself now um, it's just about being an entertainer it's not really about the tricks I mean the tricks obviously their tricks have to be brilliant there's no question about that but it's not really about trying to put one over on people or pull the wool or make people feel stupid. It's nothing to do with that at all, as far as I'm concerned. It's just about having a laugh and, and, and crossing the footlights, as we say. You know, just, just, just everyone in the whole room, stage and auditorium, being, being one building, one group of people of which I'm, I'm a part. It's interesting you talk about the stupid thing, because one of my greatest thrills was doing a show for the BBC last year in Vegas and getting to talk to all the big guys like Lance Burton and Penn and & Teller. And Penn said, magic really, in the olden days, was about, look, I'm doing this, and then I make you look there, and then you're the fool. You're stupid and I'm clever. Exactly. And he said it's kind of gone away from that now, and he doesn't like to do that. And in fact, what they do in their show is often show you how they do the trick and then completely disprove it by doing another the trick with the end trick yes exactly um but i, I just find it so mesmerizing and it's it, it's so encapsulating now but as you say there are two types of magicians now i also saw david copperfield now i don't know whether he's a magician or an engineer <laughs> because it's just so i mean it's breathtaking don't get me wrong i mean he makes like 10 people disappear off stage and then, then two minutes later they're at the back of the auditorium but that's not really magic is it that's that's clever engineering and two billion dollar sets i think you're being well, in one way, I think you're being a little unfair to him because I don't think he is an engineer and I think he's a very good magician. I think he's a very good entertainer. But I know exactly what you mean. I think it's a cultural thing in a way. If you go on British television and say you are about to witness the impossible, the whole nation goes and makes a cup of tea. Nobody gives a monkey's. If you say that in America, you've got a fighting chance of making a living. And, and that's, <laughs> that, that's what David Copperfield has been doing for years. He's been saying, this is impossible. I have great powers. I'm going to make the Statue of Liberty disappear. Absolutely. Yeah. Nobody in this country is interested in great powers. You know, it, nobody cares. We're much, much more. And there are occasionally, there are exceptions. You know, Yuri Geller's an exception. He made a huge living out of great powers for a long time. And, uh, I mean, Darren Brown now, in a way, I suppose you could say, is an exception to that. People sort of take what he does terribly seriously. But it's not its not where I'm at at all. I'm just not interested in that. I'm interested in being an entertainer. And this current show that I'm doing, um, Jeffrey Durham, No Hat, No Rabbit, is about everyday objects. It's what it says. It is no hat, no rabbit, no dodgy boxes, no fishy things, no, no silks, none of that stuff. Yeah. It's just done with absolutely everyday objects, a lot of which I simply borrow from the audience. That is what I'm into at the moment. Um, trying to do the essence of of close-up magic, as we as we know it, you know, magic done on a tabletop. The essence of that, but done on a stage in a stage show. That's what I'm trying to do. Nobody's ever done it before, and uh, and I'm trying to do that. Give the give the sense of what it's like to be at a close-up show, and also genuinely in the bar in the interval and all the rest of it. Do it close up. I love it. Now listen, you've had such a fascinating career. And it's gone on for how long now? About 75 years, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's 30, actually. 
That's it's remarkable, 30, yes. isn't it's it? It's 30 years of, of solid magic tricks. Before that, I was an actor. Before that, I was at university learning Spanish and Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so, so uh, yes, I'm, uh, I'm, I started when I was 26. 56 now. So, Did you uh, always want to be a performer? Because, I mean, you seem the kind of guy I could imagine at school was fun and upbeat, or, or was that not I, I did, but what I wanted to be was an actor, and um, it took me a while to realise that I was much better at facing the audience than sort of doing it sideways, right. which, is, which, is, which is what actors are paid to yes, do. They're paid to look at each other, and, I, <laughs> and I'm paid to look at the audience. And I, um, directors of, of plays always used to say, will you just turn inwards? Will you stop <laughs> looking at the... It took me a while to realise that actually that was my talent and that I should have been doing it all along, really. I started as a stagehand in Variety, and that's where I really watched people and it was after that that I became an actor but that job for 18 months whatever it was as a flyman as they call it the guy up the top pulling the scenery up and down that job for 18 months at a variety theatre really gave me a taste for it so when mm. I came back to it after acting it was a it was a great sort of liberation for me in a way I'm one of the few presenters in this country that keeps getting guys like you on. And I'll tell you the reason for why. I so admire your ability to ad lib because that really is your only talent, isn't it? <laughs> if you think about it, because anybody can do a magic trick. My granny, if you taught her how, because let's face it, there's no such thing as magic. It's no. just suspending disbelief. No, absolutely. So technically anybody can do it. Yes. But what they can't do is that jibber jabber to make you look the other way or distract you. You have to be able to do that. And you have to be able to do it. And that, what is, that is what is about the personality. That re nobody in the world ever wanted to see a magic trick. I mean, you know, not even me, not even you. Nobody wanted to see a magic trick. What they want to see is a nice person doing one. And therefore, the magic trick that I do, if you saw Paul Daniels do it or Darren Brown do it, it would be different. It would be different enough that you possibly wouldn't even recognise it as the same trick. That's, that's where the skill comes in. Making it your own and expressing yourself with it. Mm. And that's what, I, that's what I love. I make a prediction. I think within a year, <laughs> there'll be a magic show back on the TV, and it's I'll tell possible. you why. If you look at what's happened with Variety and with these pop idol shows, Make Me a Star, it's created a whole new line of actual sensible kind of music shows where people come on and try and perform. They're launching a variety show, Simon Cowell and uh, also Paul O'Grady, in the spring. And I think as soon as people start seeing young magicians back on the TV and young performers, not just singers and dancers, but people who can actually do something and act... I'm sure they're going to put a show back on and I think it will revive people like you and they'll be straight back to you getting you on TV because I know a lot of people I interview get very frustrated because you can fill the theatres. Ken Dodd's the best example. Yes, absolutely. Two, three thousand seater yes. venues. Oh, absolutely. Can't get arrested on the TV. Yes, everyone thinks you're dead because if you're not on telly, they come out and say, didn't you used to be Jeffrey Durham and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> it's, it, yeah, they just, you know, it's a funny thing. It, we're ruled by telly and now the light, what used to be spent on variety shows is now spent on things like Big Brother and, you know, Ready, Steady, Cook. I mean, that's, 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 how, that's what mm. happened. It's true, Just isn't it? Historically, that's what happened. And uh, yes, of course, it'll change. It'll come back. It'll come back in a different form. And the different form it comes back in will be right mm. for, the, for the moment, for the time. And, uh, and I'm a great believer in that. It doesn't worry me in the least. My, uh, my job is just to entertain people. And I do all sorts... I mean, private parties, you know, is a big part of my work. And I really enjoy doing private parties and corporates. Um, I mean, if you... A magician's job is to hold something up and say, look at this. So nothing could be better uh, for, a, for a corporation, for somebody who, who wants you to, oh, you know, sh launch a new product or whatever, mm. than to get a magician to do it, because you can make it appear from nowhere and all that kind of stuff. I suppose for you as well, the more intimate the venue, the better you are, because oh, the closer people can see I you. I enjoy that very mm. much. I, I hand-pick the venues for my one-man shows. I'm really, really careful about where I go for the one-man shows. One thing I do want to talk to you about is your uh, ex-wife, Victoria Wood, him congratulations on being together for so long because <laughs> I genuinely think she's the only woman that makes me cry before she even opens her mouth and she's so thrilled it must have been great to be with her for you two to be so funny together or weren't you we're, no 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 absolutely no absolutely we were, we were together for 26 years and uh, one thing and another we're separated now um, but we live around the corner from each other and uh, you know we, we live a nice life it's fine it's okay I think you're one of the most blessed men in the world to have <laughs> to have someone like that to wake up every morning to who's so clever and her stuff's so brilliant and uh, 
how marvellous for you. Right, next, we'll do some magic tricks, shall we? Oh, go on, then. Magic on the radio. <laughs> I Let's don't see. know if it's possible. It's Capital Gold live across the UK, and we're back with top magician Jeffrey Durham. Now, then, you've got me the other side of the desk now. What are you going to do? Well, I just uh, it's an experiment. Uh, you don't know what I'm going to do, do you? No, you absolutely not. have to be not. absolutely clear. There's no collusion no. here. You don't know what I'm going to do. I haven't asked you to say anything or no. any of that stuff. OK, look. I know nothing. You're not going to hurt me, are you? No, of course You're not going to hit me or anything. Of course I'm not. <laughs> this is just a dictionary, right? Mm. It's just a, a dictionary. On the open two pages of a dictionary, you've got four words at the top in bold type. Yeah. Yes, the, the, the index words. Absolutely. And as I page through the dictionary, not surprisingly, they change. Of course. <laughs> from page to page. Hopefully. Yes. yes. I mean, people think, you know, I've got a dictionary with all the same page. <laughs> but I haven't, have I? No, That absolutely. is just an ordinary a normal dictionary. average dictionary. It is, absolutely. So, we're looking at those four index words at the top. We'll call them one, two, three, and four. OK? Yep. What I'm going to ask you to do is take this dictionary mm -hmm. and open it anywhere, anywhere. once. Yes. Yeah, and look at the four index words. Right. Consider each of them in turn. Right. But then just plump for one of them. Choose one, two, three or four. So I need to find four words on top of the page and choose one of them and think about choose it. Choose one of the, the, the four okay. in bold type at the top. OK. So open it anywhere you like. By the way, we should just say there's something like, how many pages are in this thing? There's, there's thousands, yeah, thousands exactly. of pages. What have we got here? Exactly. 1,493 is at the back. Something bottom. like that, yeah. exactly. So what I'm going to ask you to do is open it once. OK. Yeah? Just open it once, anywhere you like. Yeah. Look at the four at the top. Are you looking at them? Yeah. I'm not looking at all. Yes? Yeah. Those four index words. Yes. Yes? Have you chosen one of them? Yes. Shut the book. Was it one, two, three, or four? Two. Now, how many pages did you say there were in here? Oh, thousands, 2,000 pages. And definitions, it says somewhere. 95,000 entries, mm. 150,000 definitions. Right. And you are thinking of one of those words. It's very appropriate for me. Why? <laughs> <laughs> it was a lucky word. A lucky word for you? <laughs> yes. OK, I'm going to try, and I'm just going to ask you to spell it in your mind. Mm. Just spell it in your mind. I don't know whether I can, actually. It's not easy, this <laughs> really? one. It's long. It yes, is very long. Very long, this one. Because as you spell this word in your mind, it's mm. coming out at about something like 11 letters. It is, is 11 that right? letters, yes. It's 11 letters. I wish I knew what it meant. It's I'm too stupid. <laughs> it's got two... It's got two U's in it. It has, Which yes. is most unusual. Peculiar um, word. You wouldn't use it, I don't think, every day, actually. I'm not I'm making sure it hard I really know what this word means. Do you want if me I'm to right? do it again? Because I know that this is probably difficult because it's a very old no, word. No, it's OK. It's Are you okay. sure? It's OK. It's in two halves, this word. And the first half is multi. I know that much. Yes. The second half of it, I'm really not absolutely sure. I think even quite. I, I suppose I know what it means if I'm right. There's two O's in this word. Yes, there is. There's an yes, S, there is, there's yeah. a T. I, I'm looking at the sort of back end. There's an M, there's an L. They're in little clumps in the alphabet. You've got L and an M. Correct. And then you've got an R and an S and an, a U. Yes. And a, and a T right down the back end of the alphabet. I'm going to take a stab. I'm going to say I think it's multiflorous. How the hell would you know that? Is that right? How would you know is that? Is that right? Yes, Multi it is right. That means with a lot of flowers on, does it? I don't know. Well, I didn't read the definition. I didn't have time. But Neither do I. But I had a feeling. Yeah, I just had this feeling. Multiflorous. <laughs> Having yeah, many flowers, it says here. There's, there's 90,000 words in there. There are. That absolutely. was a lucky guess, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Very lucky guess. Well, Jeffrey, listen, it's always lovely to talk to you. And uh, thank you for coming in. The final question yes. I have to ask, of course, is does it ever go wrong? Yes, all the time. And how do you deal with it? Because you could look very stupid if you don't deal with it well. You just say, does anybody want to buy a trick? <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, if you're doing a two-hour one-man show in theatres, yeah. like I am all the time, something goes wrong once every sort of 20 minutes. Right. Actually. Because it's mean, not it, a science, It's usually it? something very little. But yeah. something is going wrong, and what you have to do is just make sure the audience doesn't know. And the longer you have experience, the better you get at doing that. 
that's why I wouldn't want to do the kind of David Copperfield huge tricks, which are amazing, because you think if any of those go wrong, I yes. mean, literally the show's over, yes, isn't it? Absolutely. Because you, you can't absolutely. do anything about it. Absolutely. Listen, it's always a pleasure to talk to you and come on anytime because it's just so great to have someone who's got passion for what they do. It seems like today, and the thing that bothers me about the new people who come through, I don't want to talk to them because they've got nothing to say and they don't seem to have great passion for what they do. I know, why it's a is funny that? thing, that. I don't know why. I don't know why. Um, the ones who... I mean, the truth is that if they haven't got passion for it, they won't make it. I mean, that is the truth. You have to. Mm. Because it, because so much is, 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 is going to... So many obstacles are going to emerge in your way yeah. through 30 years of doing it that you really do have to be very very determined and very very finally how's the magic circle doing in this country now because i know there's still loads of kids who still want to do it aren't there and they have these big festivals every year i mean do you go it's to it's unbelievably popular and they, there are conventions, and I lecture to magicians all the time. And I, oh yes, I mean, uh, it's a, it's a big, big thing. Um, on the internet, it's huge, and they all think that because they've learned a secret of something off the internet, they know something about magic mm. tricks, which unfortunately for them, and fortunately for me, <laughs> isn't true. There was a whole spate of programmes, wasn't there, a while back, where they revealed how the big tricks are done. Oh, yes. Did that matter to people like you? No, no, not in the least. Um, it mattered occasionally, I think, to the people who'd actually invented the tricks and got extremely cross, mm. and I don't blame them. Um, but basically what that must, man was doing was even more foolish than it looked because he was just giving away his own secrets, yes. um, which, is, <laughs> which is almost unbelievably stupid. But But... Really, what, what what happened was that people got bored. I mean, learning a magic trick is dull. It just isn't very interesting. How I did that, look at me, aren't I clever, isn't interesting. No. But don't you think it's like Christmas with the presents? Why they're under the tree, you're so excited. The minute you've opened them, you're, it's yeah, gone. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yes, We absolutely. all want to know, and I'm going to beg you how you did that trick. How did you know that <laughs> word? But if you told me, I'm just a lesser person for it, really, aren't I? Because I'm not going to feel any better about myself. No, I mean, that's absolutely true. I can, t I could, but I mean, I could, I could show you what I'd done, and I'd, sh I could show you what it was all about. You wouldn't really be any the wiser. You certainly wouldn't be able to do it. No, um, <laughs> because it takes a long time to learn how to do this stuff. Jeffrey Durham, thanks for coming into Capital Gold. Thank you.